In this video, we're going to walk through the process of embedding Calendly within your Salesforce uh, ScreenFlow. So to do this, we're going to use this Calendly scheduling widget component. And the way that you can get this component in your org is by installing the Calendly scheduling widget unmanaged package. I'll include the package install link in the video description. But if you'd prefer to look at the source code yourself, I'll also have a link to the GitHub repo with that code. So assuming that you've installed this scheduling widget, when you go to create a new screen in Salesforce, if you go down to the custom section, you'll see this new scheduling widget that you can just drag onto the palette. And once you've added this component here, you'll see a lot of properties on the right hand side and we'll go through uh, each of them. So here I have a Calendly link. This is just my base Calendly link. This could be your specific event type. You could even use a merge field here. Now, then we've got CSS here. So let me, let me show you real quick what would happen if I remove this and left it blank. You see the page does not look so great because the styles have not been applied. So in order to make the container match your specific uh, screen, you'll just add CSS styles to that. And here I'm just saying that the height is 1,000 pixels, the width 750, and then the margin I'm just uh, centering it. So you'll notice a background color here. This requires that you are on the Salesforce, or I'm sorry, the Calendly Professional Edition or higher to be able to customize this. And what's important here is this needs to be a hex code value. So I will just uh, plug in a random one here, but you can go search any kind of color picker and get the hex code value. I will quickly save that. And you'll see that the background color of the scheduling widget was changed, so you can do this to match your branding. But uh, again, do note that to use this background color or any of the uh, color customizations in here, that you'll need to be on a, the Calendly Professional Edition or higher. So if we scroll down, we'll see that you can pre-fill uh, all 10, if, you, if your scheduling form has it, custom question answers. And where it gets interesting here, you'll see I'm using a merge field now to pre-fill the email, first name, and as well as the last name. So if we look at the flow here, you'll see that I'm retrieving uh, a lead record. So because we have that lead record, we don't want to make them have to re-enter their name, email address, and all of that information. So you can use the merge fields here from that lead to go ahead and pre-fill that. Uh, and if there's any guests, you can add them as a comma-separated list of guest email addresses. So uh, real quickly, let's go take a look at what that looks like on the actual scheduling page. So if you see here, it has automatically pre-filled the lead's first name, last name, email address, and then also these guest emails. And now you may be noticing the name field here. In Calendly, you can either separate the first name, last name fields into two separate fields or make it one field. So if your specific event type is using a single field to represent the name, then you'll want to use the name field here instead. So Salesforce record ID, uh, this allows you to associate the scheduled Calendly event with a specific record in Salesforce. So here I'm just passing the lead ID so that we know that the event is associated with that specific lead when they schedule. Now we also have these UTM parameters which can be used for tracking purposes. I just hard coded Salesforce flow in the UTM source so that I can know that when the event is scheduled that it came from the Salesforce flow. Now that's all of the pre-fill but 
you may be wondering, what is this event, the schedule decision? Well, we don't want the Calendly invitee or lead that's scheduling. We don't want them to be able to go to the next page unless we know for a fact that they've scheduled the event. So if I click next year, you're going to see it's just going to keep putting me in, in a loop. And so the way that we detect if the event was scheduled is that you can reference the screen above, so Calendly scheduling widget, and you'll see that there are three output values here. So this event scheduled will be set to true when Calendly detects that an event is scheduled. Now you'll also see this event URI and invitee URI. We're not going to go into detail on those in the video in this specific video, but if you're familiar with Calendly's V2 API uh, on developer.calendly.com, you can actually use these values to retrieve information about the scheduled event. But for now, we're just going to use this event scheduled, and we want to check if the event scheduled is true, then we're going to let them go to this thank you page. If the event was not scheduled, then we need to go back to the screen to ensure that they scheduled the event. Okay, so now that I've scheduled an event, that variable should be set to true, so I'm going to hit next. And you can see that it now takes me to the thank you page. So that's all the attributes that can be changed within the current uh, Calendly scheduling widget. If there are any other features or recommendations uh, for embedding this on your Lightning Flow page that you'd like to see, please add them in the comments. But thanks for watching.